Some very large divisions of animals have body plans they have inherited from an incredibly distant ancestor that all their relatives follow, almost like a blueprint. For vertebrates this is their skeleton, in its most rudimentary form this would have just been a backbone, but over time new features evolved, like ribs, a skull and eventually four limbs. Our ancestors adapted from a group of fish known as the lobe fins that eventually settled on having four bony fins that would be inherited by all land animals as four limbs. Some lobe finned fish have more than four limbs that still have surviving lineages, like the coelacanth. However, eventually, the lobe finned fish that were ancestral to land animals had four limbs, and so this is what was gifted to all vertebrates that live on land. When these animals became land adapted, they exploded in diversity. However, although they would fill every forest, cave and desert, adapting the tools they needed to survive, no vertebrate has evolved out of this four-limb archetype. Even for animals that have taken to the skies, this has come with a loss of legs, or at least a loss of mobility through needing to modify their legs into wings. But arthropods are built differently. The hard animals with an exoskeleton have developed ways of creating new limbs to suit their environments, meaning they can create a new tool useful for their survival in addition to their legs. So why do they have such a varying number of limbs? Arthropods are less limited by number of legs due to how their ancestors built their bodies. Unfortunately, early arthropod evolution is extremely poorly understood, so exactly what this common ancestor looked like isn't known. The common ancestor of all arthropods lived an extraordinarily long time ago. By the Cambrian period, almost half a billion years ago, there are already several groups of animals believed to be arthropods, showing they had most likely already evolved and split into several groups at this point. Their common ancestor most likely existed during the Ediacaran, that was over 540 million years ago before the Cambrian period. Fossils from this time period are extremely scant, with only the odd fossil being found in various parts of the globe. The only exception being a small preserved ecosystem found in Mexico, and famously, the Ediacaran Hills in Australia, which hide extremely bizarre soft-bodied organisms. These entities have been notoriously difficult to fit in with the family tree of any modern animal or plant. These were creatures like Dickinsonia, that was flat and could grow anywhere from the size of a coin to the size of a bath mat, or Kimberella, that seems to have fed on bacteria or algae. It has been suggested that one Ediacaran organism may have been related to arthropods, named Sprigginia. However, later studies have shown that outside of superficially looking a lot like a trilobite, there just isn't enough evidence to tie them to arthropods, and they could have actually been any number of organisms. Although fossil evidence is scant, there are modern creatures that have been grouped as being somewhat closely related to arthropods, like the marine worms, Priapelida, roundworms and their relatives, and many microscopic creatures. Just like arthropods, it is essential for these animals to shed their outer skin in order to grow, and studying their DNA has reinforced this relationship. Out of these creatures, the closest to arthropods are most likely tardigrades and velvet worms, which are sometimes grouped into the panarthropods. Although the relationship is not completely clear, these are the closest living relatives to the arthropods. As velvet worms are the more primitive of the two, they may offer one of the best living examples of what very early arthropods may have looked like. Velvet worms are extraordinarily old creatures, and are the last living members of an ancient group that have fossils dating back to the Carboniferous period over 300 million years ago that are remarkably similar to their living species. Velvet worms have unique features that link them both to more primitive worm-like animals and arthropods. Velvet worms are believed to be closely related to a group of Cambrian oddities known as the Lobopodians. Since their discovery, many Cambrian fossils have been difficult to fit in with existing species, and particularly difficult to identify were the soft-bodied worm-like creatures with stubby appendages that also had claws, spikes, or plates. So, like velvet worms, they shared features with both worm-like animals and arthropods. These creatures were named the Lobopodians, however they are considered to be a strict group with their common ancestor, and the name is more of an informal group of animals that are linked together by having similar traits. It is very likely that the common ancestor of arthropods was a Lobopodian as well. Specifically, Lobopodians like Siberidae or Ceramichella may have been closely related to the ancestor of arthropods. Animals like trilobites or radiodonts, which is the family that contained Anomalocaris, are considered stem arthropods. So they are from a lineage of creatures that stemmed off just before the evolution of arthropods, but then survived long enough to adapt many unique features. However, very early arthropod evolution is still very controversial, and there are a lot of valid criticisms and disagreement that some scientists would have with this explanation. Plus, there are still things that are almost completely unknown due to a lack of fossil evidence, like how arthropod legs evolved to be segmented. 
One thing that is for certain though is that the earliest arthropod or arthropod ancestors would have had a lot more legs than most arthropods do today, and this played a big part in why modern arthropods look the way they do. Out of the big groups like arachnids, hexapods containing insects, and crustaceans, it is bugs like centipedes and millipedes, known as the myriapods, that are the most primitive. That is to say that all of the arthropods evolved from a creature that would have had many more segments and legs, and centipedes and millipedes just look a lot more like this common ancestor than the other arthropod groups. Myriapods also don't undergo metamorphosis, and unlike insects and spiders that as adults have a very fixed number of legs, the amount of legs and body segments varies wildly among different species of centipede and millipedes. Some species gain legs and body segments throughout their life while molting as well. The most popular theory of why arthropods look the way they do is that they evolved from centipede-looking ancestors and over time evolved to lose legs and segments, while other segments fuse together making larger body parts like the thorax, head or abdomen. The segments of arthropod bodies are also known as tagma, and this evolutionary trend where they fuse together and specialise into distinct sections of the body is known as tagmosis. Tagmosis is the reason behind many of the features seen across the whole arthropod group. For instance, this is the reason insects still have visible segments on their abdomen, and although they no longer possess legs, this is not the case for many insect larvae that sometimes still have appendages on their abdomen segments. For instance, mayfly larvae still have appendages running down their abdomen they have adapted into gills. Some more primitive spiders also have visible segments on their abdomen too. A subset of crustaceans known as the decapods, which contains creatures like lobsters, crabs and shrimp, all have five pairs of legs, whereas many other crustaceans that are believed to be more primitive have seven pairs, like isopods, that contains pill bugs or woodlouse. Finally, a mutation can be induced in certain types of flies that can make them grow legs in place of their antenna. It may seem incredibly alien for a creature's body structure to be made up of lots of copied segments, but vertebrates actually have parts of their body that are formed by copying segments as well, like vertebrae and ribs. And animals evolving to lose and gain ribs and vertebrae is actually a big reason many vertebrates look the way they do. Many vertebrates have evolved to increase their number of vertebrae and increase the number of ribs that accompany them. For an extreme example, snakes have adapted to gain a significant number of vertebrae and ribs compared with their closest relatives, lizards. Also, vertebrates have bodily structures formed by fusing segments together, like the sacrum, which is the bone that sits between the hip bones of the pelvis and is made up of several vertebrae which have fused together. One big difference among many with the copied segments of arthropods, however, is that they naturally form with a pair of appendages, which makes it considerably more likely that mutations could cause the development of extra legs. If these benefited the creature, it would be more likely that these creatures would survive and pass it on to their offspring, so they are just more likely to evolve more limbs as a solution for their survival. And due to the bodily structure of a very early common ancestor, we and other vertebrates are just very unlikely to do this. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.